Welcome back to the DoD Risk Management Framework Series. I'm Mike Redmond, walking you through step-by-step step, your successful implementation of the NIST Risk Management Framework. We've made it to step number five, authorize. Throughout this section, we are going to ensure that you can support the creation and completion of the Plan of Action and Milestones, or POAM, in accordance with the RMF role, as well as describe the contents of the security authorization package, authorize or support authorization of the information system itself, state the level of acceptable risk for your information system, and adhere to the correct procedures when a system is authorized to operate given an interim authorization or not authorized at all. If you are studying for the ISC squared cap examination, the authorization step of the RMF process is the focus of many cap exam questions. So when it comes to system authorization, it really all is about the assurance case. You need to build an effective assurance case to assure the authorizing official of the system's posture. You do this by compiling and presenting evidence of the system security posture, uh, the basis for determining effectiveness of those controls, the product of the assessment, as well as any system assessments that have done outside of the official assessment process process and a final risk determination from the validator. In the authorization step, there are four key elements. The plan of action and milestones, or POAM, the security authorization package itself, the ultimate risk determination, and the risk acceptance. Starting with the POAM, this is the document that describes the remediation tasks associated, allocates resources to those tasks, and sets the milestones and schedule for those tasks to be completed. The primary task owner of the POAM is the information system owner and the common control provider. So really when it comes to creating and managing a POAM, there's only a few simple rules. You'll identify the type of weakness for the information system, the office or organization responsible for correcting that weakness, the amount of money needed to correct the weakness itself, scheduled completeness dates, as well as key milestones and the completion dates of those milestones, any milestone changes. If you miss a milestone, it needs to be updated and corrected. The source identifying the potential weakness itself and the ongoing status, met, not met, or implemented. Here's a look at a simple sample POAM. You see all the required fields, weakness, the POC, required resources, scheduled completion dates, all the way through to the current status of ongoing. For most all components, the authorization package itself is automated. It will come out of EMAS or Archer. However, the task owner for the completion of the authorization package is the system owner and the common controls provider. Inside the authorization package, you will include the system security plan, the security assessment report, and the completed plan of action and milestones. So just to recap here, the System Security Plan, or the SSP, is a general overview of the security requirements for the system, the description of the agreed upon security controls, and the other supporting security related documents and artifacts like policies and, and procedures that make up this complete security posture of the machine. The Security Assessment Report has the results and recommended corrective actions for any control weakness or deficiencies. And then the plan of action and milestone, which we've just spoken about. It's there to add accountability and measure the plan to correct the weaknesses or deficiencies and to reduce or eliminate identified vulnerabilities. That brings us to the risk determination itself. This is the identification of the current state of the system, any recommendations for addressing residual risk, and the threats, vulnerabilities, and potential impacts identified within the security assessment report itself. This is a task that is owned by the authorizing official or their designated representative. When it comes to a solid risk management strategy, it really is just four or five basic questions. How is the risk identified? How is the risk evaluated? How is the risk addressed, accepted, and monitored? 
finally, that brings us to the risk acceptance. This is the authorizing official's official authorization decision. Any terms or conditions that they may attach to it and the authorization termination date. There are several flavors of authorization, beginning with an ATO, an authorization to operate. Remembering the utopian state of the risk management framework is a concept of ongoing authorization. It's maintaining the knowledge of the current security state of each information system, re-executing the RMF steps when necessary, and maximize the use of status reports. This is designed to prevent the occurrence of the every two and a half month fire drill before the assessors come. Since you're continuously monitoring each control, there should be no need for a large validation event. Next, you can receive a special interim authorization. Generally, this is termed as an interim authorization to test, specifically designed as with DICAP for systems that have gone as far as they can without the presence of live data. It needs to be connected to a live network to continue its development. Each IATT will have a specific time period and set conditions. For instance, a 90 day active period. At the end of that active period, the AO is notified that the period has expired and the system is to be disconnected. So within each authorization, there are certain classes that we deal with. For instance, under ONB, you have major applications and general support systems. Under the RMF for DOD, you have the system or a site or possibly a type, a platform IT system or an enclave. The core definition for a major application is an application that requires special attention to the security due to the risks of magnitude of harm resulting from the loss, misuse, or unauthorized access to the information in the application itself. Whereas the definition for a general support system would be interconnected set of information resources under the same direct management control which shares the common functionality. For DOD systems, for instance, a system authorization can be given for both a major application or a general support system, whereas a site authorization would be used to evaluate the applications and systems at a specific self-contained location. That separates from a type authorization, which evaluates an application or system that is intended for distribution. It is a one to many. A site authorization has a core focus on one location or facility with all the components and parts of the system there at one location. They generally will be under one command or facility, one common set of security policies, and a common environment. However, a type authorization allows for a single package to have identical copies. Type authorizations generally include, for instance, a set of installation guides, configuration requirements, and operational security needs that are included with shipping. These guys are intended to ensure the hosting location understands their requirements to the security of the system as a whole. Next, an enclave authorization would consist of a collection of computing environments under the control of a single authority, like a LAN or a backbone network, perhaps a data center or a ship. Uh, the DoD enclaves always assume the highest security level being supported. Next, we have PITs or platform IT authorizations. Uh, the PIT systems are usually special purpose systems like special purpose hardware or special purpose software. They provide a service to, dedicated to, or essential in real time to a mission's performance. Uh, like calibration equipment would be considered platform IT. Now here is somewhat of a new wrinkle within the risk management framework. It's called the outsource authorization. 
This is usually supported by private sector systems. There are typically two flavors, dedicated to the DoD and shared with the DoD and private users. For instance, a possible cloud implementation. But they are required a DoD assessment and authorization for DoD users and data. Again, the goal here is ongoing authorization, attempting to eliminate the need for a 36 month cyclical cycle of authorization. Again, with continuous monitoring in place, there should be no need for a 36 month cycle. And finally, we have a denial of authorization to operate or a DATO. And I think the definition is pretty self-evident. Turn it off. Generally, DATOs are reserved for either a system that is highly vulnerable and misconfigured or possibly a system that is being decommissioned. Whatever the authorization decision, it will be documented in a formal procedure and document. That document will include the authorization decision itself, any terms and conditions for that authorization, the authorization termination date, and the risk executive functions input if they provided it. Next, we will look at the final step in the risk management framework, monitor.